I want to go back and talk about your gear. I, I, I know that you love talking about gear like I, I do, but gear. talk about gear from the first three records. Mm -hmm. What were you guys using? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the guitar rigs. Mm -hmm. for, the, for, for, for the first two albums, we basically used modded Marshalls. Okay. Um, Kill em All was recorded uh, with a modded Marshall that James had got from L.A. Couldn't remember who did the mod. It was like a H Jose Arnando kind yeah, of type mod. Yeah, though, yeah, like, but, like but a, not Jose. Right. You know, not Cesar, you know, two yeah. guys who did, did stuff down in L.A. That amp got stolen in Boston in 1984. And then whoever ended up with that amp... <laughs> <laughs> They don't know what they're sitting on top of, I'm sure. We went to Mesa Boogie. Okay. Uh, we said, you know, we're here to buy amps. You know, give us an endorsement. And they said, we'll give you two for one. And we're like, okay. <laughs> and they said, we had these new amps, you know, with, 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 with three gain stages and an EQ. And I was looking at them. I was thinking, okay, this is like something that we need to check out. And then I remember calling James and going, James, we need to do a, a second trip down to Mesa Boogie. You need to come with me. And so we both went down there, and they had these new heads they were making. And they only made these heads for, like, maybe 10, 12 months or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. the Mark II C+. Plus. Yes. And, and we played those, and we were blown away. And what made them... Particularly great is that they were really responsive to active pickups. You know, we had EMG guitar uh, pickups in our guitars. Yep. So EMG pickups with these amps were the sound for us. We were like, holy shit, this is it. This right. is it. We're taking these with us to Denmark and we're, we're recording with them. And actually, no, I stand corrected. We bought those Mesa Boogie amps and then we did the Ride the Lightning tour. Okay. The Ride the Lightning American tour, and that was the tour where we learned how to dial them in because we'd never really had you know amps like that before. It was just strictly Marshall amps, Fender amps, you know. And so the three gain stages, the push pull, the 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 the, the eight, was it eight band uh, graphic EQ or four band whatever five band. Yeah, it was what we wanted and what we needed at the time. And that was the amps that we took into the studio from 1985 to now. We're still using them. Okay, and what would be your your rig as far as your pedal rig? You had a wah-wah. I always have a, 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 a wah and a tube screamer. Okay. Ever since I was about 15 years old. I'm not much for delay or reverb. Mm -hmm. And and you know, guitar players come up to me and go, you know, I, I, I noticed that you hardly ever use delay or reverb. And like, I thought about it and I thought, well, some of my favorite guitar players always have delay on. Like, Neil Sean always has his delay love on. Neil. You know, I That's love right. Neil Sean. I know you love him, too. Yes. So, one day I went and, like, started playing my 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 amp, you know, and adding a little delay. And I thought, you know, I like playing with delay, but it it's kind of like, it makes it easier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I'm just not going to play with delay anymore. And, 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 you know, it's just, there's something about it. And my, it's just, the note just hitting me. It feels like when it, there's delay, it's, it's, it's going away from me. And yeah, to a certain extent it is. But, you know, it's something, when I play without delay, it just feels like it's coming more from, from my inner, inner thing, whatever that is. Okay, so the Tube Screamer, though, is this something that it was part of the sound? Would you have that on when you're yes. playing rhythm? yes. And oh, well, not, not rhythm, almost always Only lead. for lead, right? only, only for leads. And, you know, I'm not one for using distortion pedals for rhythm because the gain needs to be tight, you know, harmonically tight. The sound has to be tight. You can't have frequencies, like, just kind of, like, bouncing around randomly. Needs to be balanced, needs to have... You know, some some sort of, you know, flow to the, to, to, to the frequencies. And... I love that aspect because if you know know about that, then you can sound sculpt correct, correctly. Because when I was a kid, I was just randomly turned stuff. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it it wasn't. With my my, my my rhythm sound, it's a lot cleaner than you think. Talk about that. Greg Philman is always pushing me to like just add more distortion, but I only like 
like a, a distorted rhythm sound to an extent because I need that punch. I need to like feel like the strings are hitting, you know? I need to hear every single string when I hit a chord. And, you know, I need to like hit one note and you can feel it, you right. know? If you have too much distortion, it feels like sponge, it's spongy, you know? I need, I need bark, you know? I need to hit, you know? I need it so when you go dunk, you physically feel it. And James is the same way. And it's always been that way. You know, it's always been that way for him. And it's always been that way for me. And, you know, the fortunate thing when James and I first started playing together is we basically came, come from the same musical places. You know, I was just like Sabbath, UFO, you know, Aerosmith, Kiss, there you Van go. Halen. You right. know, and then Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, New Wave of British Heavy Metal, Motorhead. We like the same stuff. We like the same guitar sounds. Him and I, basically, you know, even though he grew up in, Nor uh, in Southern California and I come from Northern California, we're very, very similar players. The only difference is I play more leads. That's the only difference, you know. And his his right hand is is so precise. Yes. You know, my left hand. You know, I got my a lot of my precision is my left hand. His precision is in his right hand, and we've learned so much from each other. And you know, James, I love him. I love him as a musician, I love him as a brother, but it's hard being a band with him because sometimes he shows up and he'll play something I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> I've never heard anyone play something like that. And it's still coming. Uh -huh. You know, it's just like, you know, moth into a flame. There's a rhythm thing where he's just, I never heard this on an album. It's like a gallop with a pull off. Uh huh. I mean. No one's ever done that before. Yeah, how does he? But the, no one has ever done that. The before. right hand things that he does like that are they're so tight. He doesn't really even like have to work at it. He can fall out of bed, pick up a guitar, and then there's like sixteen notes coming out effortlessly, and I love that. So and it's wait, a, I gotta say this. So I always joke about when I try to play your songs that I can't do downstrokes like that anymore. I just can't. I've been doing that since I was a kid, and it's all because of the Ramones and the Sex Pistols. And why is it the downstrokes are more, the, the, the impact of playing the downstrokes versus adding in the upstrokes? Because when you go, it adds more high end. Because the higher notes hit first. Exactly. Right? Exactly, and you get less percussion. Yes. And you know, it's really important, you know, palm your hand. Yep. And, like, as close to the saddles as possible, you know, oh. and... You know, I love it. I love that sound, you know. It's full on. You know, it's any Ramon song. Any Ramon song. I became really good friends with Johnny Ramon. I hang out with him constantly. And, you know, he was a really, really funny guy. Really, like, crazy, divisive character again. He was a contrarian, you know, just for his own sort of like amusement. You'd mm -hmm. say something, he would just instantly the say it. <laughs> right? And he used to say to me, Kirk, the only good heavy metal band out there is Black Sabbath. I'm like, whatever you say, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, Kirk, you know, all these other guitar players, they're crap. You know, the, the best guitar player out there is Jimmy Page. I'm like, whatever you say, Johnny. And you know, I would let him have his opinions. And then I'd say, John, you know, you've been a huge influence on me. And you tell him this all the time. He goes, how can I be an influence on you? How can I be an influence on you? I go, Johnny, the way you pick. You know, it's, it's like it's an influence on so many pe people. Right. And I said, how did you come up with that? And he goes, I was just counting. That's the only way I could count. It's through downstrokes. I said, Johnny. Brilliant. It was the only way he can like keep time. He was keeping time by doing just downstrokes. He fucking <laughs> practically created a whole genre of music right. uh, doing that. And it's amazing to hear that, you know? Do you ever listen to some of your old songs though and think, 
man, that's kind of a weird riff. Do, oh, does yeah, it, all the time. Okay, what's a song that even today you think, God, that's a weird riff? Um, well, Nepper Messiah. That mm -hmm. opening riff, when I first heard that, I was like, that's such a weird sounding riff. But then I also recognized that that riff is a guitar player's fucking dream <laughs> because it's fun to play and it's so sideways. And when you play it, you're like, wow, this is a sideways riff, but it is really, really cool. I mean, we have a lot of sideways riffs. You have a lot of sideways riffs. Yeah, the riff in and Justice for All is, is you know, the, there's a few riffs in there. They're just like all over the place. And, you know, as a band, that was kind of our proggy Right. Sort of period. Okay, talk about that, because you guys do have a prog element to it that I don't think people really talk about mm -hmm. that much. But we're not influenced by prog. We're not prog. influenced by prog, but you have progressive mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. yeah, and that is experimenting the limits of our capabilities. And again, always trying to do something new. And, and back then, we, we figured out that playing along with different time signatures, we started on, on, on a Master Puppets, Playing along with different time signatures was a really, really great way of, of, of mixing up our songs. And so that was, that was our exploration into that. At the time, when we were writing that album, 1988, music was pretty complicated back then. It was, there were shredders everywhere, you know? Yes. Music was divided right down the line. You had your super players, and then you had your kind of like, players that weren't so great, you know? I guess we were kind of like influenced by, by what was going on at the time, which was you know, showing that you can play basically. And that's what really, and Justice for All, the music is largely about, is just like exploring you know, the, the, what, the, the, what the boundaries are for us. 